Hello and welcome to my vlog. Today we'll be talking about when we leave this life, we eventually become part of the whole, yet distinct. A group of spirits from the 10th level of heaven told us an important fact concerning our ultimate destiny. There are reaches there far surpassing any imagining of ours, are of your own, and these will be made clear to us as we in the ages which are ahead put on state after state of more perfection. So far as we are able to project our minds into that far immensity of life, and being we cannot see any end to our onward going, for, as a river viewed from the mountain in which it takes its beginning, so is the life eternal. Kathleen, the communicator from a group of spirits sent to converse with Rev. G. Val Owen, presented the topic of our accession into the unknown levels of heaven. The group of spirits are from the tenth level, which is considered a very high sphere, where life and buildings can be constructed by the power of thought from these advanced spirits. Even they, who are so wise and beyond us, marvel at the road ahead, a highway which appears to reach into affinity. Our life is one of eternal learning. One of our vital characteristics we should emphasize is our enjoyment of discovery, for this attribute will propel us into realms and kingdoms which are beyond any of our fantasies. Humans have always been explorers, whether a new continent, the headwaters of a river, or an asteroid or planet. Our inner desire to travel where we have not yet gone is part of our makeup. Without it, we wouldn't be considered material to have graduated into spirits with free will. Jivao Owen and other spiritist mediums have sent us information from the spirit world. Focus on the spheres around, on, and under our physical planet. But this particular message exposes the immensity of the spirit universes which lay beyond. They expand further on what lies ahead. The stream broadens and into its volume absorbs more and more those other streams which come from lands diverse in character as in soil. So is the life of a man, as he, too, gathers into his personality many side currents of diverse quality, and in himself blending them in unity makes these one in and with himself. As the river is seen still to broaden until it passes out of itself and ceases to be distinctive as a separate entity, so man, as he himself broadens out beyond his initial state, passes into that great ocean of light, where we cannot follow him in his further progress, from our viewpoint, on the mountain of his birth. But this we have learned, and few there are who doubt it, that as the river of the ocean does not change the substance of the river from the water into that which is other than water, but only enriches and modifies its quality. So man will still be man when he emerges from between the banks of individuality on the one hand and of personality on the other, and blends the richness of his accumulated qualities with the infinitude of that which is the beginning and the consummation, the outgoing and the incoming forces of the whole cycles of being. There is so much in the paragraph above. First, we are a fluid creature. We are not a spirit hatch to a particular form. We are a possibility. We are a scaffold upon which to hang and place tools, capability, assets, attributes, and connections. After each graduation from one level to the next, more is added, more is altered. But above all, we are still ourselves. Our personality is intact. We are still individuals. Second, while we retain our temperament and disposition, we become more. We plug into the wider spirit environment. We contribute to the whole while simultaneously maintaining our unique contribution, thereby increasing the power and scope of all. Many people, religions, and others have ideas of what occurs after our death. They range from life in a constant paradise to complete absorption into a supreme intelligence. All may be partially true, 
since we travel up a path in which we experience many transitions, transformations which may make us unrecognizable if we saw ourselves a billion years hence. The spirits hint at our future when they tell Jivao Owen, Also in the river fishes and water animals have their habitation, but wider and deeper realms of oceans make room for things of life of grander bulk and power than these. So those who in unity disport their immensity in person and in power must be of magnitude of glory beyond our ken. Who can know for certain what is meant by magnitude of glory beyond our ken, except that as we rise we become more awesome in our majesty, our love, and our wisdom? This is a future worth fighting and sacrificing for here on earth a place that is but a small step toward the light. Lastly, the spirits tell G. Val Owen that those so far above us are not unaware of our travails. Their love constantly bathes us, giving us incentives to stay on an upward path. We therefore glance ahead toward those far brothers of our own, and know that they are not unmindful of us who, if we be much removed from their abode, yet have our faces set toward their quarters. It is from the ultimate, through such as these, that life comes forth and bathes in love these lesser worlds of us and you. It is enough. We take our sip of the chalice of our destiny and go forward much refreshed and strengthened for what duties lies to hand. If you would like to learn more about spirits, how we grow, how we ascend, what are our powers as a spirit? Read my book, Book Two, Spirits and the Spirit's Universe. God bless.